nothing other than that now. Joining me are Jenny Russell, a columnist for The Times, and Patrick O'Flynn, the MEP from the Social Democratic Party, formerly, or UKIP. Good evening to you both. Patrick O'Flynn, first of all, was Parliament right to exert and exercise its will this week? After all, they are our elected representatives. Uh, no. I think what's happened this week, I would say, is an ultra-conservative and reactionary uh, behaviour uh, from Parliament. And it reminds me, we never had a democratic revolution in this country, so Britain finds it very hard to deal with great direct democracy exercises like the referendum. Now, vast majority of these MPs stood up for the Tories or Labour on manifestos that promised to implement the referendum. The vast majority of them have voted for Article 50 to leave on March the 29th. Nothing about uh, a deal being being needed whatsoever. But you heard John Berko say, unless you actually you know broke precedent at each time, then you'd end up with no, we'd end up with stasis in Parliament. Well, I would like to see uh, that put into practice in terms of democratising Britain, and I certainly feel that if well, the MP endless referenda. No, well, well, well I, I think. Um, what we have at the moment is something that, that's got a whiff of sort of Gladstonian politics about it, where these, these, the, uh, the age of deference, which doesn't describe where we are now, we had the greatest democratic exercise in our history, the MPs have promised to implement it, and now they're conspiring against well, before, it. Well, before we talk about what's going to happen next, where do you stand on uh, the will of Parliament and what happened this week, Jenny? You won't be surprised to know that I think Parliament did exactly the right thing. The problem that the government faces is that the country was almost exactly split over Brexit by a narrow majority it voted to leave. It did not vote for the kind of hard Brexit that Theresa May has put forward, nor did it give her the mandate she wanted in the general election she then called for a hard Brexit. Theresa May has failed to recognise that and therefore she's ended up presenting Parliament with a solution which doesn't have the backing of the country and doesn't have the backing of Parliament. Because the government has failed, it's absolutely right that MPs should step forward and but say, we now will come forward and start coming up with some kinds of conclusions which may have democratic legitimacy. But do you think history will show that she's on the hook for this? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she was the person who, who set out those ridiculous red lines, which were a very hard Brexit, which there was no evidence that the country wanted. Well, no, now what's happening is that, you know, various cabinet ministers are out and about, you know, Jeremy Hunt and mm. his warnings that were talked about uh, by Nick earlier in the Daily Mail tomorrow morning. Minister, this is Chris Grayling saying, wrecking Brexit, Brexit will let in the far right. And then the Daily Mail goes on to talk about uh, a surge in neo-Nazi extremist groups of MPs block or weaken Brexit. Is there really the danger of a kind of gilet jaune movement? If well, a I, I think there could be, well be a gilet jaune movement, but uh, the rise of neo-Nazis, I think that's, that's simple scaremongering. I mean, if you look at the polls at the moment, um, the current, what well, I would say, hard right iteration of UKIP, even in the current political context, is running at about a quarter of the level of the Nigel Farage, Suzanne Evans iteration of UKIP. I, that's why I've joined the SDP, because we want to give the mass of millions of Brexit voters a strong Brexit party to vote for that's moderate. Uh, and, well, and not going to the political extremes. And I think that's what Brexit voters want. Well, let, let's look at actually now what's going to happen next week. And as you know, David Grossman was explaining, it is going to be a cat's cradle. Uh, if, as expected, Theresa May loses the vote on the deal by maybe up to 200 votes, then what happens next? Does she hunker down? Does she, as discussed there, come back very quickly with Plan B? Well, as David Grossman says, anybody who's certain about what's going to happen is a fool because the only person who can be sure what the Prime Minister is going to do is the Prime Minister and she's not prone to sharing that with anybody. Having said that, I've talked to a couple of Cabinet Ministers tonight who were very clear that they thought that Theresa May would be very likely to stand up afterwards, after she loses the vote, and to say, much as David Cameron did after the Syria vote, I get this. I will now come I up with, this. I get this, I, I get the message, I will now come up with something different. And I was also told by these ministers that she's likely to clear whatever she's going to say with the cabinet beforehand, because it the will whole be cabinet. a major this shift. Is, this is are. what the cabinet ministers so, tell so me, let, I'm not saying say it's, that, it's let's necessarily say, going to happen. Let's say that, for example, there'll be a, a move, a shift towards a customs union, which as we were just discussing, Sam, because you know, Labour would buy a customs union. They might well, although of course what Jeremy Corbyn would most like, would would be for there to be a Brexit for which the Conservatives would take all the political responsibility so that he could then reap all the electoral rewards of not being responsible. There is, there is that to factor into it, but it's certainly true that leading Tories think that what Theresa May is likely to do is to reach out to the Labour Party for a softer Brexit, which could well include the customs union. And it would still be a Brexit, which is what you want. Well, uh, 
I mean, like Jenny, I haven't got the perfect crystal ball, but I suspect from, from having observed this dithering Prime Minister all along that what we're going to get is a horrible, murky sludge of a political situation where the Prime Minister loses the vote extremely badly, but no one is quite sure whether it's so badly that it knocks her withdrawal agreement dead or whether she but can come she... back for one more time. And I think it'll take a while for that, for that to emerge. I don't think we'll get a, a clean response from the Prime but Minister. But if, if she goes for a customs union, she's still got the issue with the back stop but she doesn't have a bigger problem with her brexiteers well just the you know it, it, it's not what uh, we understood by brexit in the in the campaign but, whatsoever do you think the result of all this